My name is Ian Walsh. This is The Moment Money Matters. Joined today with John Clyde. John, thank you so much for being on. Hey, I appreciate, appreciate having being you. Yeah. I appreciate it. So um, I, for a while now, I've been kind of like from the sidelines hearing your name. And I always thought everybody keeps saying John Clyde, John Clyde, John Clyde. And I'm mainly in the investment world. So, but I just knew your name in that, in the retail real estate Keller Williams world was so big, but I didn't know much about you. And I, and I, as, as we caught up prior to this interview, I said, I need an outline to understand your history because I understand when somebody owns a brokerage, I understand when somebody's got a mega team of which you have both in, in this area, but you're also um, an investor in six other local brokerages and the regional director overseeing over 9,000 agents in Keller Williams which also makes you one of 31 people and your essentially your accountability partner is Gary Keller, right? So I understand now why I needed to sit with John Clyde because there isn't a conversation in the Keller Williams world on this side of the country that has been heard that you weren't either a part of or had a, had a strong influence over. Um, so with that said, this is kind of uh, the pinnacle of kind of the, the interviews that I could have at this point with, uh, w in the Keller Williams world. Um, how did you start? in this business. I have to know that. Like where did a guy at some point you were an agent just like anybody else out there and you came from that to overseeing 9000 agents. So, can you go into a little bit of background on your history for everybody? Yeah, so uh I started actually as a New Jersey State Trooper. So, I okay. kind of didn't um you know, I, I wasn't really looking to be a realtor. I don't know how you know, a lot a lot of people say I'm growing up and they put I'm going to be a right, realtor. Right, right. But um I I was a New Jersey State Trooper and um one thing about police officers that I know, we, we work shift work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have time to go and do other things if you're not sitting around, you know, either you're working out or you're just, you know, you're downtime, what are you doing? Sure. So I had enough time that I said, you know, what else can I do? And I recently purchased a house and I kind of felt yucky the way the experience went. I said, I need to know more about it. So I got my license and um, the, I, I joined a little small brokerage and this individual was more into the vesting side of things. And I watched him and he owned a bunch of house and I was like, what do you do? And he's like, well, here's this what I do. So I watched and so I kind of just got my license for kind of more experience and to kind of learn more about the business. And all of a sudden, you know, you know, I'm like getting to buy my first investment property. I didn't do a lot of real estate up front, up front. But then all of a sudden, you know, I through, you know, looking at investing, I started to get this like, this is pretty cool. Like you can make some money, you know, you can have some passive income. Um, and then, you know, I, I think the shift became where now, you know, I, I was doing like 20, 30 deals and I'm like, well, this is real money. Mm. Um, and, you know, I had this incredible job as a New Jersey State Trooper, but I think my heart, for whatever reason, started to shift more towards like, I really like this industry. It's fun. You you make money, you, you uh, create relationships. So I kind of like that. And then you know, then you could, there's so many different facets. You can flip homes, you could, you can own them and have passive income streams. So I think, you know, I just started to get passionate really about real estate. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I at, at the one point I was with uh, Century 21 and I had like some incredible years during the boom. If you re recall the 2003s and 4s and 5s. I got in in 08. So I got to watch that. I, I, when the market was going down, I was jumping in. So I just missed that part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I started in 1999. And, okay. And, you know, kind of, you know, it was kind of like, you know, not great. And then all of a sudden, you know, one, two, mm. and three. And then all of a sudden, you know, you put a, house, a sign in a house and it sells. Yeah. And then I'm investing at this point too. So it started to get exciting. And then, you know, what happens like anything, people watch you and they're like, you know, a lot of state troopers were like, hey, uh, what's going on in your life? You know, what are you doing? Yeah. They ask questions and um, and then uh, kind of what happens is, uh, you know, I almost want to switch different units because I get a fresh pool of new young troopers that want to buy okay. and invest in properties. And then, you know, then I start to really become a, a top agent. I think in 03 and 04, I started to sell like 100 homes a year oh, there you go. as a as you know, as a really dual career. Yeah, that's um, that's moving. Yeah. So and and the rest is history. You know, I kind of started to, to, as the the market slowed down and you know, kind of we went into a shift. Um, I started getting this passion to kind of want to lead more people. You know, like I think most agents, you get this. I guess maybe a boredom. You're like, what's next? It's just you know? another deal. Yeah, yeah. What's next? You know, mm -hmm. what what's going to to excite me enough and. 
Um, I, I searched around at a lot of different companies, you know, you name them. I've, I've looked into them and this company, there was something about, it. I was like, wow, like you can, well, you can do that. You can own, you could, you know, there's profit share. And that's kind of to what I was telling you earlier about my book. Yeah. You know, I had a pension for life and then I found this profit share. So it gave me reasons that maybe I don't need to stay. Well, well let's not glaze yeah. over that part because this is really important. So two things. Um, can I put the th yeah, things up? Can sure. I do that? Okay. So John's writing a book. Okay. So John was, uh, I'll give some background because I think he'll be humble about it. He was a state trooper, great job. I have a lot of friends, state troopers. I have friends that are, you know, great government job. Not even, it doesn't even cross their mind to leave that job, right? No. So not only that, but you're, you're telling me that you were 17 years in, you needed three more years for your pension, which, which is the whole reason you probably started the, to begin with, right? Uh, I don't know how many kids you had at the time. You're a family man, you're raising a family. And I know you were in investing and in real estate at that point, and I'm sure there was income coming in. But to go, I'm out, I'm leaving three years early, and then not only do that, you know, most people on the surface would say, you're crazy, right? I'm sure that was something. And I'm sure everybody around you, it's one of those moments in life, except everybody but your wife probably said to you, what are you doing? And you have to have unbelievable self-confidence uh, to pull that off in yourself. That's the only thing that mattered because everybody else around you said, you're crazy, right? Yeah. Um, you did it. And lo and behold, you catapulted your career at that point to, I'm sure you're doing well then, but obviously, you know. So what in your mind thought, I, I don't blame you. I think it's a great idea. I love when people follow their dream. I think it's, I never want to knock a dream for anybody that goes after it, no matter what the odds are. I just did an interview with John Bolaris and I said, three years ago, your dream was only yours, buddy. And now today you've got a full team around you and so forth. Yeah. So I love that. But what made you at a pivot point go, this is what I'm doing. I'm out. Like, why did you decide today is the day that I'm putting my two weeks notice? Um, you know, a lot of prayer, a lot of things happened, but I will tell you that um, it, it wasn't a quick decision. And I, I wrote the book because it was it was so hard. Yes, I had money and I had passive income stream coming in from investing, but still, you know, 17 years of doing something. And then you're like thinking like I'm three years and then I have this the rest of my life. And then then you start start thinking about your family. I'm like, God forbid something happen, happens to me. My wife will have this and my children will have it for the rest of their life. You know, yeah. so I'm. I'm like, you know, am I being selfish? And then, then I'm also thinking, you know, um, I believe in myself. And if I'm not minus 40 hours a week, what could I create and what could I do? Because I've, I've seen what I did minus 40 hours a week. Right. Just imagine what I can do plus 40 hours a week. Right. So I started thinking that and I spoke to my wife. Um, I will say 80% of the people said you're nuts. Um, of that 20 was my parents that, that believed in me, you know, my, my brother and people that knew me said, Hey, you know, if you, you know, you think that this is you're right and you're good to go, I trust you. You've done a lot of good things in your life. And, and I think very smart business people also agreed like, Hey, you know, if you budget it and that's what I talk about in the book, if you budget it and you really have a plan, mm -hmm. then why not? And, and, and I think the, 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 the pivotal moment was, uh, the regional owner of the greater PA region uh, just was looking for a regional director and which was a, you know, I guess it is a job per se, but it's in alignment to what I do. You know, most regional directors own multiple businesses and they're business owners, but in the process of their job, they also run the region or lead the region. Mm. So it was a, a, a career or, or a, an employment that would allow me to do everything I want to do, but still, kind of maybe fill in the blanks for maybe what the state police part of it, meaning, you know, I, I would have filled that blank in because there, there is a, a compensation with that. Um, and then, and then really the, the, the other thing is I'm being trained to be a leader mm. at a high level. Sure. Um, even when I was an, just an operating principal here in this Washington township office, you, you, you grow, but to the level of kind of like, you know, it's not as fast as being a regional director because you're exposed to the CEO of the company. Sure. You're exposed to all these incredible leaders around the country. And it's, you know, I travel to Austin every month for the last sure. five plus years. Sure. So, you know, I'm there with some of the top people in the country every day and, you know, just learning and growing and, and what they call, what they call it. Um, I'm uncomfortable pretty much every day in this role. Mm. So, you know, I, I think, 
um, what, what has happened with Keller Williams. It's, it's, it's such a, a, a unique company that really doesn't focus on, um, you know, the BS of the business. It's really mm. about being a business owner and being true to yourself and living a life by design. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, like I don't bad mouth any other competitor or company. Everyone, you know, I was with another company before. But I will tell you that, um, you know, there's so many exa- examples of people that came in this company like me. And within five years, like, you know, I, I'm blinking. I'm like, oh, my God, like I've created multi-million dollar wealth. Um, I have opportunities, endless opportunities. I'm, I'm on a call or I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I'm mentored and coached by Gary Keller, who's probably one of the most brilliant minds in, in, the, in the country or in the world. Sure. So, I mean, it, it's just, you know, it's almost like, you know, pinch me, you know, what's going on here, you know? I think I think you know the the, the the what I see in that story mostly is you understand opportunity when it's in front of you. So you made you made a comment about Keller Williams being great for people that in, in this environment they go from zero to sixty in five years, right? And this this environment promotes um, a sense of identity and a sense of, and I know this just from being around it. I've seen like the different offices and so forth. A sense of identity and a sense of if I can, if I'm the person that knows how to seize opportunity, there's going to be opportunity found within Keller Williams. Mm-hmm. I've also noticed, and I, I, there's other great brokerages out there too, but they don't, there's something about when I walk into a Keller Williams office in general, I could tell you if you didn't put the sign on there, if I'm in a Keller Williams office or not. So it's something that breeds uh, I don't know if it's the culture or whatever you want to call it, but the culture that allows people when you insert the right people in there, because I'm sure just like any other business in the world, corporate or not, you know, you're also going to have people in there that it doesn't matter how much support you give them. They can't seize an opportunity if it's in front of them. What Keller Williams I've noticed has done for people is created a sense of um, in, in the individual offices. It puts the opportunities out there and almost kind of kind of points people in the direction of grabbing the opportunity. Like you have like the, so for the regional director opportunity for you, very unique opportunity. But if you weren't the right guy at the right moment at the right time, you could have passed on that and you'd be kicking yourself today, right? Like, so you understand how to see its opportunities. And I, I would 100% without knowing, I know that that wasn't the first opportunity you've seized in your life when it was in front of you. And I remember we did a, uh, when we did the Market Makers event and Richard Oliver was on stage and he said, it's just when you have to stay in the game long enough and it's when timing meets your opportunity at the right time. So uh, when timing meets opportunity. So if you're in the game, timing meets opportunity, now you're going to take it and you can go with it. He, he doesn't, you know, he didn't claim that he was that much smarter than anybody, that much more this. He was focused. He was driven. But, and he says, you know, I knew how to seize opportunity was in front of me. I also think that's a highly underutilized skill set. And if you're involved with a culture that's able to promote that, I think it's a value that you can't tangibly put your hands on and say, oh, this is what we can bring. You can't. But that is uh, something I've noticed every time going into a Keller Williams office. I don't know if that's your experience. With well, those. the other thing um, that I didn't mention um just because I wanted the opportunity of regional director doesn't mean I just got it. Okay. Actually, I had to earn it. And as you can see, probably by my office, there's all these different um, post-it large notes. Uh, we have a thing called career visioning. At the time, it was called Recruit Select. Okay. Um, so there's a process of being hired in this company. Um, and I, I think it's the, it's the most incredible tool gift that this company has because it, it tells you your behavior in that role for how long, you know, how you would behaviorally be in that role. Um, and, you know, they not only look at John Clyde's um, past experiences and what he did to get to even sit in that room, meaning the trooper being a leader before, you know, being a football player and all that stuff to lead up to the fact of my, my success from this office that you're in now started with my team of six to 300 and almost 50 agents now. Um, that allowed me to even get in the room to be a, a candidate for regional director. Mm. Then, you know, you go through a, a pretty intense process of a hiring process of do you match the behavioral match to be in this process? It's like a, a disc on steroids. I was going to say a disc, yeah. Yeah, and um, nothing like the disc, but, you know, kind of uh, just to give you some, you know, kind of a format of what, it, what a process is. And in that, there has different functionalities of, you know, the first process would be the verification of that assessment, then a thought process to kind of see how you think. Life story, kind of like a biography of your your life, like sitting right in front of you, because you, some people think, oh, I've done great in life. And then you start it to kind of just go through it chronologically mm. and you're like, oh, it didn't do so good. Mm. Um, and then if you actually put uh, numerical numbers to it, like, what did you earn? 
you're like, wow, I didn't really do much. Right? And then, and sometimes they've done awesome. You know? Sure. And then the last part is, you know, motivation. Like, how do you think? Like, how big do you think? Or what's, hmm. you know, where do you want to be in five years if everything went awesome? And um, I, I, I've loved that process so much that I've, I've done it hundred, hundreds of times with candidates from operating principals to director of operations on a team or whatever. And that's the same process that we have for every position in our company. You know, operating principal, team leader, market center administrator, um, you name it. They take an assessment to get put into a position. And so they earn the role in every role, every position. And for, as a region, we actually approve operating principals, team leaders, and MCA. So they all go through a process to even become a leader in a Keller Williams franchise, which I think is very powerful. That's a lot. That's in depth, man. Well, let me ask you this. I, so where do you want to be in five years? Well, I always said, you know, I, I, I love, you know, leading more people. So I, I guess you have to go, you know, I was telling my wife, I guess we got to go to Austin because that's where all, you know, you, you got to start that's working it, for Keller Williams International. But yeah, I mean, I would love to, to lead more people. I, I, I would want to be... Uh, a regional owner one day and, and own the, the region um, as my partners, the McCarthy's do. Um, there, there's a lot of opportunity. I, I love public speaking, so uh, probably speaking more and coaching more on a on a more national level. You know, I do it local locally per se, and I, I coach all my my operating principals pretty much every two weeks. Um, it sounds like you're doing what you want to be doing in five years. You just want to do more of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I this job is is incredible. I mean, you can never, you know. It, it's uncomfortable every day. So if you like growth, this, you know, be a regional director. Cause I mean, it's uncomfortable. I mean, I have to prep for a, a call with, you know, all these millionaires on Monday, you know, some of them, you know, that's your sure. center city guys and a bunch sure. of these other owners. I mean, these are, you know, well Sharp rounded lines. men mm -hmm. and women that have done incredible things. And I have to figure out content to, you know, every Monday of making them want to get on that call. You sure. know? So, um, and, and I love it. You know, I love the the fact that I need to do that. And then then you have to actually coach and support them to hit the the goals that they want to hit in those market centers. That's a lot. Uh, yeah. That's a lot, man. I guess. But you're very focused. You seem to know exactly what you want. I think that's the hardest part for a lot of people. A lot of people think they want one thing, but they actually don't know that they want another. Uh, it seems like you are, your goals with what you want and what you actually deliver are in line. I, I think you probably feel that way about yourself, right? You seem well, you know, the one thing I can't forget is my family. I mean. Um, I don't think you can do anything without having a powerful, I have a beautiful wife, four kids. Um, and well, there's no purpose otherwise. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, I, I think, you know, that work-life balance is important. And I, you know, I'm at home for dinner. If I'm not traveling for Austin, you know, I, you know I'm at their games. I'm, I'm at home for dinner every night. I don't work weekends. I mean, the um, Facebook pictures I see of you are always you and your family, right? Or so yeah. it's something. It's always, always And I can always family. do better there. Sure. But I do... I'm purposeful about trying to be better every day as a parent. So sure. I think that's important too. And, and a husband, obviously. I get it. I get it. I completely, yep. I, I really, it's something, you know, you go through different things in life, family related that make you really, there's no other point in doing what we do here. Yeah. If you don't have the family back there, like what would be the purpose? I, I don't know what it would really be. So, um, so let me ask this. So we have your book coming out. When do you think it'll be out? The goal, and I like to hit goals because I'm an accountable person. Yeah. We're, we're shooting for December second launch. Okay. Um, Amazon e thing or how do you all that you stuff? Yeah, we're gonna okay. we're gonna start launching a, um, a whole campaign. Hopefully, first okay. week of October. Good. Um, I'm just finishing a couple little because there's a lesson plan to it. So not only will the book provide my story, it also like if you if you're at a job and you're like not happy because. I was obviously not happy because I would have never left. You don't leave things, you know, like realtors, you don't leave when you're happy. Right. I wasn't happy being there anymore. So there's so many people in life that are sitting in a job where they're, you know, a police officer, school teacher, you name it. They're sitting in a job that you're just like, I'm just don't, I'm not happy anymore. Mm -hmm. I actually gave a less a plan of, okay, this is what I did. This is how I prep, you know. And so maybe someone don't have to struggle like I did internally when they make a decision. There'll be at least a plan that I did, not saying it's perfect, but it's a plan that you at least have and you can reference to when you, you are thinking about leaving your career. I love that. And then what's the biggest takeaway? Like what's your goal when this book hits my hands and I'm reading it and I go, what's the thing you want me to remember from this book? I want you to never feel that you can't leave a job. Um, I think, you know, there's so many people feel trapped like I did. It was a, it's a, it's a pension job. So that pension is like, oh my God, like I'm gonna make 60 some $70,000 for the rest of my life. I got to stay here three years and just be unhappy. Mm -hmm. You really don't, you know, um, if you set yourself up, self, set yourself up right, there's ways to do it. 
long as you have your family in mind, if you have family, you know, if you don't, then that's different, you know, but for me, I had four kids and I can't just pick up and leave and not think about them. And you gotta, you gotta be honest to yourself. Can you do this? And if not, when can I do this? So I think if someone is unhappy or, un, or thinking that they can't never, can never leave their job. Um, and I, I think it's as deeper than that. I think it's, you know, you could even uh, me being a trooper, I remember so many spouses, women, men, that were unhappy in their marriages and felt like they couldn't get out. I think it's a plan f just in general, like to, to budget in life to say, okay, I wanna leave in six months, what do I do? And then how much money do I need to save? So I kind of give kind of thoughts of what I did to get out of that situation and to make sure I can live monthly and have a plan like any any sure. business. Sure. It's a, you know, like a startup cash business. Flow is cash yeah. flow, right. So I, I think it'll give them a sense of if, you know, like the, the four minute mile, mm -hmm. once someone did it, you know, because I, I don't think from what I heard since 1921, never, no one ever left the state police that didn't get fired or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, God forbid, or you yeah. know, passed away or something happened. You don't leave, you know, that shy of a, of a pension for life. Right. So I, I think just the inspiration, like what job are you in that you couldn't leave if this guy did it? Right? I think it's good, man. I think anything, I think what you're saying is, you can always take an action to move your life in a different direction. Oh yeah. And you have an extreme example of it. Like to me, I'm still like sitting here trying to think this through in the back of my head while we talk. Okay. Seven, three years left. And I don't care how much money I'm making. I'm still thinking, it would still tear at me. It would still make me think, I don't care if I made a million dollars that would have covered that over my entire life. So this is still 60 grand I would have made my rest of my life. But you said, I'm not happy. Yeah. And you said, I'm not willing to spend the next three years of my life unhappy under that capacity. And I have a very valid plan moving forward financially for my family. Everything made sense. So, yeah. And, you know, I had a, a car, you know, the most incredible benefits. I mean, the state benefits are great. And and just, you know, you're a trooper like, you know, you're like, you know, like we were taught like you're, you know, it's like a like it's important, you know, so Uniform, you felt yeah, important, you. you know, of a person like, you know, like I worked hard to get that. Job. I mean, that job, you talk about a process. It's very similar to our process to get in the state police. It's very tough. Sure. So, you know, I worked hard to get that. And it's like. You know, you're like, I'm going to do this. And so, yeah, I mean, if, if maybe I could do it, maybe someone's sitting in a corporate America job that they're just frustrated. Or I know 9-11, so many people left, mm -hmm. you know, the financial industry that was working downtown because of that. You know, you know, there, it takes such a big thing, like for me, to that kind of big thing. I don't want it to be so traumatic in someone's life. Mm -hmm. you know, if you prep, you know. Yeah, you can leave. So that's kind of, you know, that I, I that, think yeah. it's great because I think I think what you're doing is you're saying I'm going to give you a plan to be happy. <laughs> In short, I'm going to give you I a plan that. to be that's happy. That's a good that's a good mm, and uh, I think and I think you did it. I think you did it for yourself and uh, you're basically just saying I'd love to give this gift to other people and here's just what it is on paper that worked for me. And I've I've had buddies along the way that have helped like build businesses and stuff and they were teachers. One guy was he went teacher border patrol and uh, same thing and he go and I'm like the talent and what he has inside his brain right now that he doesn't realize needs to be unlocked. And I think what you're doing is you're giving people the opportunity that may or may not know that they have that ability to then unlock it. And then that made me feel good. I was like, I helped him get into this position that I feel like his natural calling was to be running a business anyway. He just didn't feel it along the way. So I think your book will offer that to people that can really, you know, when they have the talent, they have the ability, they just don't know it. And then when they read it, that could be the, the key that unlocks it. And it felt really good for me. So I imagine that's the yeah. the thought you're going for with people is like, yeah. hopefully I can help you. Hopefully you, I can you, help you, you find you happiness. You said it perfectly. I mean, there's so, I mean, I, my state police class had a couple attorneys, a couple engineers, some incredible people. And, I'm, and listen, some people, they were born to be troopers and right. are police officers and they should do it. You know, like if you, you got that earning desire, please, we need good people out there. Agreed. But a lot of them really you know, just didn't know what else to do. You're a young kid or whatever. And you said, that's a great job and let me go for it. And then as years go on, they, they're like not as passionate, but they feel they have to stay. And I was probably one of them. Mm -hmm. So what you said, there's so many dynamic people in this world and they, they get stuck in a rut. Yep. And so hopefully no longer when they read this book. I love it, man. Um, so this has been a really good interview. I've really been awesome. enjoyed it. Um, I don't know, you know, if I, if I was looking to buy your book, if I was looking to become an an OP, hey, whatever I wanted to do, and I need to get a hold of John Clyde. If I wanted to join this office in South Jersey, um, how would I, who would I reach out to? Is there somebody on staff? Is it you? How would I get a hold of you? Well, uh, social media is, is an awesome way. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, nowadays, you know, I'm, uh, you know, we're all techie now, right? You have sure. to be in this world, the fourth industrial re have revolution. To. You have to be. So I would say through social media, I think that instant message is awesome. I'm, Perfect. I'm uh, you know, I'm millennial like where I don't, 
you know, I don't like to be on the phone as much. So I think email and text and so, uh, uh, social media is the easiest platform. Perfect. So John Clyde on social media. Um, you guys know me, Ian Walsh, if you guys need some private lending, unfortunately. But, you know, I work with a lot of realtors. So like, it's actually not usually the realtor they're working with. It's their client. Mm -hmm. You know, their client needs to flip a house, whatever it is. So uh, you guys know me, Ian at hardmoneybankers.com. And John, thanks a lot. Man. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. you.